am a healer. Bringing clarity to our most important questions. Diabetic retinopathy can happen if blood sugar stays too high over a long period of time. And comfort in times of uncertainty. What procedure am I having today? You are having a bronchoscopy. Shining a light on a path forward. You gotta get an OR. And finding answers when every second counts. I am watching over our frontline heroes. Creating a safer place to do their life-saving work. Guiding them to faster answers. And delivering care wherever it's needed. and mapping new treatments for every individual. Creating a community to collaborate with thousands and sharing knowledge that can heal millions. I am AI. Brought to life by NVIDIA and brilliant healers everywhere. Hello everyone, and welcome to NVIDIA's special address on the state of AI and medical imaging, coming to you live at RSNA 2020. My name is Brad Jenneru, Medical Imaging Alliance Manager here at NVIDIA. During the address, we welcome all of your questions and we'll answer as many as we can at the end of the session. And so I'm honored to introduce our speaker, NVIDIA's Vice President of Healthcare, Kimberly Powell. Kimberly? Thank you so much, Brad. And thank you all for joining us in these absolute extraordinary times. I hope you're all staying healthy and safe and or making your way to a quick recovery like a lot of my extended family is right now. There are, this year marks many of the defining moments uh, of healthcare. With the devastation of this pandemic and the biggest threat to human society that we've had in over a century, the healthcare industry has catalyzed its adoption of modern technology. And today's modern technology, and one of the biggest in its time, is artificial intelligence. And so the, the era of AI in healthcare is starting today. Like many of you, NVIDIA uh, got together with all of our partners and we made a pact, we made a commitment to say, how can we apply everything we know to help in this extraordinary fight against the global pandemic? One of the first things we did was we made sure that everybody who could put genomics to work to understand any variants and any understanding of the human population that made them more susceptible uh, to a, a more severe COVID symptoms that we could understand that. Or Oxford Nanopore Technologies who was critical in sequencing the viral genome so we can monitor its transmission and its evolution. Uh, we were able to take and build a biomedical natural language model uh, that studied 6.1 billion words of PubMed uh, to create uh, the world's state-of-the-art uh, language model for biomedicine called Biomegatron. We worked with our collaborators at the National Institutes of Health to build an arsenal of uh, CT lung COVID models that can help uh, classify as well as uh, get help doctors give a better prognosis of COVID-19 patients. Uh, we mobilized 20 global institutions around the world in one of the largest federated learning programs to use x-ray and lab uh, results so that we could help predict within 24 hours of, it, of entering the hospital if you would need supplemental oxygen. 
incredible inventions um, like the hyperfine uh, mobile MRI helps bring imaging to the patient, a new paradigm that we're gonna start to see more and more in the healthcare industry. We also uh, mobilized and, and built off of um, the technology and computer vision and speech to launch a new platform called Guardian, using regular old cameras and microphones to build uh, virtual assistants so that nurses could interact with patients but not have to enter, uh, enter the COVID ICU or into a patient's room. And just last week, um, Rami Omero from UC San Diego made an incredible breakthrough and won a coveted Gordon Bell Award for a virtual microscope that allows us for the first time to see the COVID ACE protein interact with a cell protein at an atomic level, a resolution that is otherwise impossible, all enabled through artificial intelligence and high performance computing. We're delighted that we can make a contribution. And I think that the researchers and the community has really, really also appreciated the contribution. With the growth and expansion of the NVIDIA Clara platform, our downloads have essentially grown by five times from about 25,000 downloads last year, we're largely focused on imaging to over 125,000 downloads in just the year to date. Uh, we recently uh, also just uh, received our, our thousandth AI startup member. Um, our inception program is a virtual accelerator program for all of the AI healthcare startups out there and reaching 1000 startups um, this year is just incredible. We have over 500,000 GPU instruments that are out there and deployed. So we have an incredible foundation to really kick AI healthcare era into high speed. Artificial intelligence is the most important technology of our time. But we have to understand that it's domain specific. It's domain specific and it's software that writes software. On the left hand side, there is all sorts of digital data that we are now producing more than ever in the history of healthcare. We need to be able to put that data to use to develop AI models, which we call skills. These skills that are very domain specific then need to be deployed in very different ways than deploying software of the past. Some of these skills need to be deployed in real time inside of instruments. Some of these skills need to be deployed uh, inside the walls of the hospital, and some of these skills are just fine to be run on the cloud. Um, but this new domain specific end-to-end um, -end application framework is what NVIDIA has ded dedicated ourselves uh, to give the industry. And if you can remember earlier, just earlier this year with King's College London, we announced uh, a project, an open source project to build the, a, the an open source framework um, for AI model development. And today I'm excited to tell you that Monai is in production. In just you know, six short months and everyone, everyone who can contributing their knowledge to build artificial intelligence to fight this fight, uh, the adoption has just been outstanding. Um, we have uh, over 50 contributors to the program and Dr. Jayashri Karpathy Kramer says it perfectly in saying Monai is becoming the pie torch of healthcare. Um, Dr. Bennett Landman also saying that it's quickly becoming the go-to deep learning framework. And he sees it as getting them from research pr to production uh, much more quickly. And so we're thrilled that Monai is in production. Uh, it's community supported open source AI framework for healthcare. And it's very domain specific. The data of medical imaging is very specific, requires uh, specific data loading and transforms to, to essentially pre-process the data for training. There are different network architectures that are, are different than you would use AI on uh, images from your phone. Uh, they, they are very different when you're talking about 2D and 3D medical imaging uh, data sets. And then even to evaluate uh, the training um, that goes on um, to say how uh, accurate things are, like the dice score or the area uh, under the curve. These are specific uh, to healthcare. And that's exactly what Monaya is doing. It's building founda foundational building blocks to be able to um, reproduce and uh, build essentially an industry standard for AI development in healthcare. 
What's fantastic about it is it's accelerating AI in healthcare by many, many things. Um, it will come with um, a host of 20 pre-trained models. Um, pre-trained models give researchers this huge starting point where you don't have to have such large corpus of data to start. We've already pre-trained them with a large amount of data. Now you introduce um, your own data to adapt them much more quickly. And with Monai, we have optimized training. You can essentially do six times more experimentation in a day. Instead of doing a single experiment in a day, you can do one every hour. The Monai future is bright. We have eight working groups, things that are spanning from um, interoperability to federated learning all the way through to clinical deployment. So we're just delighted that the community has come together to build this industry standard framework and that is now in production and the performance is fantastic. It allows researchers to build upon previous work and reproduce all of the fantastic work that's going on out there. NVIDIA Clara is the computational framework that builds workflows. We know that we need to unlock the data in healthcare uh, in order for us to build all of the models needed uh, to bring the skills and automation uh, to help our, our frontline workers deal with the, the load, not only from the pandemic, but from all of the aging population and chronic disease management. One of the great things we're announcing today is NVIDIA Clara AI Assisted Annotation has a new feature. It's called uh, Deep Grow 3D. We initially built this model with uh, Brad Erickson's group at the Mayo Clinic, and we've now put it into production with Fovia. Fovia has their high definition volume rendering software. Um, it's an incredibly rich 3D software suite that is um, built into many of the commercial PAX viewers out there. And what this AI assisted annotation does is it's more general purpose. If you don't have an organ starting point, it's okay. That's exactly what Deep Grow 3D allows you to do. In a native radiology viewer, in just a few clicks, radiologists can annotate a 3D study in record time. This is going to allow radiologists to uh, bring their knowledge to very high fidelity labeling of data, but in the least amount of effort from our radiologists who are already overworked. With uh, Fovia's um, AI viewer, you will do a few clicks and instantaneously you'll see the interactive segmentation happening in the bottom right hand corner of all of the organs. So this is just a tremendous new model that we're bringing into domain specific uh, labeling uh, of, of uh, medical imaging data so that we can continue uh, to build all of the models needed uh, for the future of the radiology practice. I'm also delighted to announce to you today that NVIDIA Clara has released COVID-19 NGC collections. NGC collections are essentially hosted on our NVIDIA NGC catalog. It is a complete collection of five pre-trained models, has the AI assisted annotation tool that was just recently used on the COVID data set. It has the training pipelines as well as the deployment, deployment pipelines for two, the two use cases that I described earlier. The code developed with the NIH um, COVID-19 CT lung class with lung classification as well as uh, lung uh, lesion segmentation for prognosis, as well as the exam model, which is x-ray based uh, and lab based for supplemental oxygen prediction. So the entire end-to-end um, -end software is made available to you for to further your research and, and clinical evaluation um, on NVIDIA Clara COVID-19 NGC collections. We are really delighted to expand the Clara platform into digital pathology. Uh, digital pathology, it's at a perfect storm for artificial intelligence to make an incredible contribution. But digital pathology, again, is a new domain and requires more domain specific featureization into uh, the AI platform. Number one, uh, to even prepare data for training, the images themselves are so large, 2,000 times larger than a, a digital mammography image, for example, that it requires that you do something called tiling. You have to 
compile the image into much smaller bits and bytes uh, so that the training pipeline um, can handle it. Uh, but in order to do that, it requires um, a lot of pre-processing. Um, we've also optimized the training of these models uh, that, are, that are typically used um, for digital pathology. And then if you think about, because the, the data set sizes are so large that the even the evaluation and the inferencing uh, of these images is quite a huge computational task. And so we've created digital pathology um, data IO uh, libraries so that we can efficiently uh, do the inferencing and we leverage our Titan, uh, Triton inferencing server so that we can reduce the time uh, to do inferencing on a whole slide image from 11 minutes to 13 seconds. And we will continue to improve that. Um, the fact of the matter is that unless the AI can be essentially instantaneous, it will disrupt uh, the pathology process. It will take more time to do the inferencing than it might take them to read the entire slide. And so we know that performance is of the utmost importance for digital pathology. But we're just delighted that uh, NVIDIA Clara continues to grow into new domains that are very critical. And radiology and pathology together are a very powerful com combination uh, in, for cancer. And just as the New York Times wrote a few hours ago, um, cancer is not taking a break while we deal with this pandemic. So more and more tools need to be continue to be developed um, to deal with um, you know, the cancer that is in front of us. Now, the applications of artificial intelligence and healthcare are largely unbounded. And you can see that through um, just this incredible record year of AI healthcare startups. AI healthcare startups this year make history. They made history. Um, this quarter alone was a record quarter with over $2 billion of investment. Uh, this is uh, data from CB Insights. And year to date is already four and a half billion dollars, which is um, over a billion dollars more than, than last year alone. Um, exciting areas that are, are, are coming, you know, really, really growing are in digital health, as you could imagine. Um, we have to move to uh, more telemedicine and other ways of having uh, patient and doctor interactions. Uh, imaging still very, very strong. Um, there are so many industry firsts this year to celebrate by these incredible innovators in this field. Um, Viz.ai from Israel and their amazing uh, stroke detection that is now getting reimbursed by uh, the Center of uh, Medicare and Medicaid. Um, that's an industry first. Uh, Quantib has the industry first um, prostate cancer suite that is now FDA approved. Uh, Caption Health, uh, the industry's first AI-guided ultrasound. Um, such a critical time for this where um, they were able to allow, you know, someone like a registered nurse who's not highly trained in capturing ultra cardiac ultrasound be able to use their device on the front lines. We know that COVID has um, effects to those with heart conditions, and this is allowing them to really understand that um, at the front lines with, with an AI-guided device. Um, Recursion Pharma is, has built um, one of the world's largest um, digital biology uh, cell data set uh, so that we can understand more about what's going on in cells so that we can uh, do better uh, drug candidate discovery. I mean, so, so many industry firsts, this is just such a remarkable year and the startups keep showing us what is absolutely possible. And so we're also excited that this week we announced at the RSNA the introduction of the NVIDIA Inception Alliance for Healthcare. It is just incredible to take the pioneers, the innovators in AI healthcare and be able to match them up with the absolute global leaders in healthcare. Um, today we announced uh, GE Healthcare um, as one of the uh, alliance uh, partners here where GE's in tremendous reach as the global leader in medical imaging and with their already well-established uh, Edison platform and they have an Edison developer program that helps these startups with their amazing innovations get fully integrated into um, the software systems, the devices that the healthcare industry already knows and trusts. 
And so this tremendous go-to-market path that we're creating by helping curate uh, the startups that we know out of our 1,000 healthcare inception members um, and be able to connect them into GE Healthcare um, to bring them to market is just fantastic. Similarly with Nuance, um, the incredible reach that they have for all of the radiology reporting um, and their AI marketplace that they've established that make it very easy uh, with a single API for startups to be in the marketplace and all of the radiology subscribers of the Nuance platform to be able to access their technology is just incredible. I mean, over 20,000 radiologists um, and, and they're well integrated into, you know, things like their um, patient reporting. And so the connection of startups and the integration into the healthcare infrastructure that, again, the clinicians know and trust is of the utmost importance. It's going to accelerate these amazing innovations um, and get it into the clinic a lot faster. And so we're so delighted to connect our Inception Alliance, uh, create the Inception Alliance Initiative for Healthcare and connect um, our premier startups with our, our global industry partners. Because of all of these amazing innovations, the demand for inferencing in healthcare is exploding. And it takes on very different shapes and forms. And it needs to be thought about for the healthcare infrastructure to think about the future of all of this fantastic AI that is coming in the AI healthcare era. On the left-hand side, there's batch AI. Think about a researcher who has a, an algorithm that they want to go test against a large database inside the hospital. They need to run that algorithm against huge amounts of data. Similarly, in clinical workflows, which if you're attending all of the RSNA sessions here, you're seeing that there's, there's no, there's, there's no stopping in sight for the number of workflow efficiencies that can be gained with all of these AI applications, whether it's reporting or radiology or in pathology. And so these offline batch, there's going to be thousands and thousands of these applications. But we're also seeing a trend in streaming AI. Things like patient monitoring, where we can help our frontline workers get real-time insights so that they can have you know, real-time reaction time to what might be happening with a patient. Um, being able to uh, sense whether a patient might fall or with their, their vital signs uh, may be dropping. And being able to do that in real time is so very, very critical. And we need to have artificial intelligence infrastructure to allow that to happen as well. And then thirdly, and, not, and so important, is we're in the age of instrument AI. Uh, as you hear from, again, all of the sessions, the opportunity to do uh, AI inferencing for patient placement, quality checking of the images, better reconstruction and, and creating better image quality, um, the future of instruments being software defined, and the multi-stage artificial intelligence algorithms that can create a better um, image data set for even the radiologist to go um, and then process is also happening in real time. And so we have the, the greatest inferencing technology for it. Our Triton inference server is very high performance. It not only can do multiple um, inferencing from any framework out there on a single GPU, but it is also very high performance to deal with applications that are more real time in streaming and it's cross-platform. It will do this for both CPUs as well as uh, GPUs. And so it's just amazing that we were able to also not only have the most flexible uh, inferencing platform to serve all of these needs, but we also um, were able to uh, outperform anyone and be a world leader in medical imaging specific inferencing, healthcare inferencing. ML Perf is an industry benchmark. If you will, it's the Olympics of AI. There's a training and now an inferencing benchmark. And just a, a few weeks ago, um, we were able to outperform any other option out there in both batch and streaming. And so if you think about in, in batch, um, yes, there's a, a huge install base of CPUs, but we know that model complexity continues to grow. 
The models that we're creating are getting bigger, they're getting more complex, and they're becoming, they're multiplying. You want to do um, many at a time. And so fantastic performance um, on our inferencing uh, platform, NVIDIA T4, which is um, the world leader in inferencing, and all the way up to incredibly high throughput our, on our NVIDIA A100. Similarly for streaming, as I said, so important to be able to create you know, real-time insights as well as build these intelligent instruments of the future. Our Jetson NX is our, you know, couple of hundred dollar system on a chip is able to deal with um, this extreme latency requirement of streaming applications for inferencing. And so everything from a couple hundred dollars all the way to NVIDIA A100 that can do streaming inferencing, you know, 20 times faster, um, where this is going to become workloads of the future. We're going to have, um, you know, dozens, many dozens of patient monitoring applications that are happening in real time. We're going to have, you know, hundreds potentially of algorithms that are being uh, executed against a given data set in the future. And again, all of this is done on NVIDIA technology, um, and we are so delighted that we could um, really outperform and deliver the world's best medical inferencing platform. Now, this is just the beginning of the next phase of what you're gonna see happening in medical devices. We're having an AI instrument revolution. If you think about what artificial intelligence can do for medical devices, there's many critical factors. One is you can really reduce the size and the cost of the sensors of instruments by being able to use artificial intelligence. Anything from being able to make a regular camera very intelligent to a specific application, all the way to um, a handheld genomic sequencer. Um, all the way through Hyperfine's um, mobile, I think they call it Swoop now, um, their mobile MRI device. Uh, so you can really uh, reduce the sensor technology that's necessary and regain uh, the, the fidelity in the data by applying artificial intelligence. The other thing artificial intelligence helps us do is deal with the massive amount of sensor data that are being produced by some of the most in innovative devices uh, being built in the world. Um, genomic sequencers like MGI, um, where the throughput is in terabytes a day and they need AI applications to even, AI uh, si signal and image processing to even deal with the throughput of those devices. Uh, and then being able to do AI guided or acquisition-based uh, artificial intelligence. So these instruments truly generate the best possible data uh, at time of capture um, and assisting uh, even, is assisting uh, the doctors as they go through an exam uh, to help them capture and measure. Uh, so the AI instrument revolution is here. And we know that it's, it's here, but it's only the beginning. The opportunity for artificial intelligence in devices is only at the beginning of our imagination. And so what we've built is a developer kit for, for, um, for medical devices. Before I get there, excuse me. Um, we have built Cambridge One, which is the world's largest computational instrument for healthcare. Um, we recently announced that we're gonna be building a supercomputer in one of the epicenters of the world for healthcare research in the UK. This particular supercomputer is gonna be dedicated to healthcare research. It's a supercomputer of, of over 80 DGX A100s, 400 petaflops of AI compute, and it will be the UK's fastest supercomputer. We built it so that we could host some of you know, our industries, um, industry research that is the at very large scale uh, problems, um, things that have never been done before. A great example of this is working with Oxford Nanopore. As I said, the signal processing that's done inside of the sequencer is called base calling. And so on the left-hand side of, of the graph here, you can see that their base calling went through a huge step function transition. In 2016, the algorithm was based off of hidden Markov models but they soon in 2017 realized that deep learning in recurrent neural networks would give them a huge boost in accuracy. So you can see that one big boost in accuracy by just moving to a deep learning paradigm. 
But then this last mile, this very hard last mile, but absolutely critical last mile of getting to 90% to 99.999% necessary in genomic sequencing, um, they're really going through now a rapid model and training exercise of experimentation. And so just in the last you know, year, essentially, they moved from recurrent neural networks to yet another um, a network that is actually a speech recognition network that was invented by NVIDIA called QuartzNet. And through um, you know, innovation in the model architectures, as well as continued training, they're able to really reach that last mile of ac accuracy necessary. And what's so great about it is you need a lot of training and models to do that. And so supercomputers like Cambridge One is going to enable more and more of that. And so we have you know, provided, you know, with working with Oxford Nanopore, they have a complete AI based solution that allows them to go from very small handheld devices like the one on the left that produces gigabytes per day, all the way through to their Promethion, which produces terabytes uh, of data per day, all leveraging the same AI algorithm, but being able to scale uh, the throughput of their devices immensely. So just fantastic. And so the future of instruments really needs a platform that can deal with increased model complexity, as well as increased um, bandwidth uh, that come with uh, all of these new sensor technologies that are being invented. And so we have today, we're announcing our availability of the NVIDIA Clara AGX developer kit for instruments research and for AI development. This developer kit is incredibly powerful as the architectures of these instruments continue to get more complex, we're really here to reduce that complexity. So number one, it's built off of our energy efficient ARM-based SOC um, Jets and Xavier, as you can see on the, on the top there. Um, we also incorporated NVIDIA Mellanox ConnectX6 to have all of the high speed IO that is coming off of these sensors. Um, we can also utilize um, NVIDIA Mellanox technology for R RDMA and GPU Direct to be able to have very low latency sensor straight through to the GPU uh, memory for very quick computation, low latency computation. Um, we've also uh, outfitted this developer kit with the NVIDIA RTX 6000 so that you have plenty of AI inferencing overhead. We know that applications for these instruments continue to grow, the AI inferencing is needed. And so we also have um, to come along with this, um, modern instruments are software defined, so they need to have uh, an SDK to support it. So we have an SDK called Clara SDK. As I said, off the Jetson platform, you have the Linux for Tegra, it comes with all of the Jetson ecosystem. We've added in there the discrete GPU driver with IO drivers as well as our NVIDIA Edge stack. This is really important for the future of software defined instruments. The NVIDIA Edge stack allows for cloud native applications to be managed on these edge devices or embedded devices through something we call, we just recently announced called Fleet Command. All of the containerized software that lives in NGC through a single pane of glass in Fleet Command can be um, essentially uploaded, offloaded, uh, updated um, onto these uh, remote devices. And with the SDK, we uh, created uh, several reference applications for some of these real-time applications that exercise the entire development platform. So utilizing uh, DeepStream for video analytics and doing and having an endoscopy reference application or using the RiverMax technology that allows for um, you know, very rapid uh, streaming of other types of data like ultrasound data. And so we're really moving into um, the software defined world for modern medical instruments. And we've created that developer kit uh, for you. Now, we don't wanna stop there. Um, NVIDIA Clara AGX, uh, we have a, a fantastic roadmap. So available now through our partner developer program, we can get the Clara AGX Xavier kit um, that comes with, as I said, the eight Carmel ARM cores that come along with Xavier. It has the 200 tops with the RTX 6000 and 100 gig gigabit ethernet, as I said, with the uh, Mellanex uh, CX6. In the future, we're also going to have um, Orin based, our next generation um, embedded AI supercomputer architecture Orin, our system on a chip. 
And there we advanced into the ARM architecture of the Cortex A78, which is, uh, I think, 50% more power efficient even than this previous generation. And we'll introduce even, um, it, you know, there um, that the Orin architecture, it, it brings in the Ampere uh, architecture of GPU. So you'll get the uh, 200 tops. And then we're introducing more high speed. So four times a 10 gigabit ethernet, which is now sort of the industry go-to for very high speed IO in Orin. And then we'll build the Clara for medical instruments a version of that on top of it with Clara AGX Orin, with again the 12 Cortex A A78 ARM cores. Um, we'll have you know an additional 200 tops at least of uh, AI performance, and then we'll have a very high speed 20 gigabit Ethernet for some of these very advanced um, you know high throughput uh, devices. And so you can go from you know something that's more entry level. On, on an Orin all the way through to something very high bandwidth, um, like a, a next-gen sequencer that requires very high bandwidth straight into the GPU uh, for processing. So with that, uh, I'm delighted to share with you the news. Um, Monai is in production. Um, it's incredibly rich with um, the building blocks necessary for highly optimized, very advanced uh, medical imaging AI development. Um, and we have a, an incredible roadmap um, for the PyTorch of healthcare with Monai. Uh, Clara Imaging continues to expand. Um, we're delighted to be able to contribute to, to COVID-19 with all of the models that we co-created with um, the NIH and our 20 collaborators in February Learning, um, expanding into um, digital pathology and introducing um, you know, with Fovia, a new way of doing, you know, general purpose interactive um, AI annotation of images. Um, we lead the world in healthcare inferencing with our MLPerf and our Triton inference server, uh, multi-platform, multi-AI on a given uh, compute infrastructure and being able to do very low latency streaming AI inferencing. And then being able to give all of the um, next generation instrument developers uh, a platform to really let, um, let their imaginations go wild on what is possible with artificial intelligence, what is possible with fantastic IO speeds, uh, what is possible with incredibly power efficient, um, you know, SOC like the, the Jetson uh, platform that we make for autonomous machines. And then, uh, of course, we're delighted that our Inception Alliance uh, initiative is kicked off with two of the global leaders in radiology, both GE Healthcare and Nuance, and being able to connect um, our premier partners of the Inception program uh, to their incredible AI platforms. Um, and all of this, we hope, is um, something that we can continue to work with collaborators. Our Cambridge One AI Healthcare supercomputer is really going to continue to um, enable the AI healthcare era. So with that, I really appreciate you spending some time and I think we're going to uh, take some questions. Sounds great. Thank you so much, Kimberly. That was fantastic. Yeah, let's uh, let's get to some of the questions. I've seen already a lot of uh, questions come in uh, and I hope that we can get to all of them. So let's uh, start with the first one. So what advice would you give to a developer new to the AI space that wants to incorporate this technology into the applications uh, and instruments that they're building? Well, I'll give a recommendation, but I think you're going to have a better one, Brad. Um, as, I, as I talked about Monai, um, what I love about the Monai uh, initiative is that we build demo applications. It's really meant for beginners. We take and we recreate um, you know, recently published work and we put them into demos and into reproducible pipelines. So my advice first would be to go to Monai and check it out. We have um, already a YouTube channel that we captured our recent GPU bootcamp digitally. Uh, so you can learn in real time uh, with the GPU bootcamp and uh, the software is ready and available for you to get going. But Brad, I'd love to hear your, your recommendations. Yeah, absolutely. I'm very passionate in this space. Uh, so what I would suggest is really just jump in. Uh, the the way that the whole ecosystem has evolved uh, from even like one year, two years ago to where we are now is light years ahead. Uh, with Clara, you don't even need to write code to start with training AI. 
you write configuration files and what we call uh, MMARs, our medical model archives. Uh, so you start with that. It includes the scripts. It includes uh, seed models uh, and includes the uh, base configuration that you could then start to tweak and, and play around and experiment to actually create AI. Once you get comfortable with the frameworks, we also have Jupyter notebooks that, that can step you through each you know, part of the process uh, from uh, annotating your data uh, to training and fine tuning a model and then exporting and publishing the model. So my advice, just get started. Uh, there's no time like right now to get, in, to get involved in this. Absolutely. All right, cool. Let's go to our next question. How do you recommend selecting a GPU for medical imaging uh, research and development? Yeah, I guess um, this this is a loaded question. Um, you I, you really need to think about the application first. Um, the GPU can do really everything end to end in radiology. It can do uh, reconstruction for the instrument itself. It can do image processing. It can do the artificial intelligence. It can it can do the volume rendering. So um, it's kind of a, a really hard question to to answer, um, but I but I can say this: all of the all of the applications are a great fit for the GPU, and we have in our RTX line everything from entry level to very advanced. We have uh, embedded all the way to data center. We also have cloud instances on every public cloud. Um, so, so really, we are the most universal AI uh, accelerator on the planet, and uh, GPUs are the most universal, I would say, um, radiology computational platform. So you've really got all of, all of your choices uh, right there for you. Brad, do you have a, a recommendation? As with a lot of these, it's always, it depends. Uh, it depends on so many different factors, like are you doing CTs and MRIs, or are you doing X-rays and ultrasounds? Are you using uh, large images or small images or thousands of images or four really large images? Uh, it depends on uh, factors like uh, how where it's being plugged into. Uh, where do you, uh, how fast is your internet pipe? If you are in a rural community, maybe the cloud doesn't work for you. Maybe you need something on-premise or maybe you need to have scale during uh, the day uh, when you've got outpatient clinics running and you can scale back during the night. So it really depends. Uh, we put together uh, with the American College of Radiology this great white paper uh, that kind of lays out in t-shirt sizes on how to start to think about what GPU you, you might need. So depending on if you're a small, medium, or large, these are the kinds of things that you'd actually look at. So if you, if you Google AI Lab uh, Reference Architecture Framework, uh, it was something that we put together uh, with the ACR last year. And it was a great paper and uh, really kind of puts to light how you would actually go about picking something. Yeah, and I, I would just add, Brad, we and we recently just announced it uh, literally last week, um, NVIDIA creates uh, the, the world-class all-in-one um, AI supercomputer called DGX. We have this DGX in the form factor of a workstation as well as in the form of a data center. And with the DGX, what's so wonderful about it is it's completely hooked into every piece of software that's up on NGC. So on NGC, if you're doing AI research and development, we have you know, Monai, Clara, everything is completely optimized to take advantage of the DGX out of the box. You don't have to think about um, how to do multi-GPU training. You don't have to think about how do you take advantage of automatic mixed precision. We're completely current with all of the most recent frameworks, uh, PyTorch, TensorFlow, you name it. Um, it, you know, on NGC has our ten Tensor, our, our Triton inference server. So when you're, you know, doing your evaluations or thinking about how you're going to deploy. Um, so the combination of NGC and DGX is really um, gets you off and running in, you know, instantaneously. And, and that's what our own developers use at NVIDIA. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, one more thing that I'd say on that is when we think about inference and bringing inference to scale at hospitals is also something to, to really think, think about and think through. Uh, it's all well and good if you're able to manage one study at a time, chunking your way through. But when you all of a sudden have 10 CT units uh, or you're handling all the imaging studies for an entire region, you need to be able to scale up 
and scale out the resources. So really thinking through not only what your needs are today, but developing a three to five year roadmap of what's to come is really important as well. Absolutely. Let's, let's get to our next question. Are there support services to expedite implementation of Clara into private practice uh, groups and imaging centers that don't have data scientists on staff? Yeah, there's a couple of ways that um, you could think about this. One is um, NVIDIA has an incredible network of partners we call solution development partners. Um, these are, um, you know, domain specific, again, I say this, uh, domain specific partners for healthcare who really understand not only the data, but they can kind of talk you through what kind of problems you're actually trying to solve, and then what are the tools and the necessary workflows that you need to set up in order to do that. You can find that on our website called Solution Development Partners for Healthcare and Life Sciences. And this is a fantastic group of people who help work through that. Um, the other thing I would recommend is that uh, everybody really needs to start having uh, a group of data scientists and IT, IT staff that understand AI. And so as Brad said earlier on, just start. A couple of ways that you can just start is NVIDIA offers the Deep Learning Institute. Everything from the beginning of what is deep learning all the way through to more advanced, uh, even medical imaging um, uh, training modules. Um, so there's a lot of, as Brad said, resources out there um, so that you can yourself get trained. But at the same time, if you have a deep problem that you're ready to solve, um, there are a lot of um, solution development partners out there that can help you do that immediately. Yeah, no, absolutely. But it's all around getting ready for the future. Uh, you know, I think that even as you think about uh, quantifying what your problem is, is, is really important. So rather than say, I, I need data scientists because I want to do AI, it's more around, I need AI to help me with this quality problem or this efficiency problem and really start to, to say, do I have the data sets? Do, what do I have what, and what do I need to get there? And data scientists is one, having the right frameworks, having the right infrastructure, all of these things are important for success as well as having clinical champions as well. Uh, so making sure that you have your buy-in from your uh, physician teams, uh, your clinician teams, et cetera. So. Yeah, absolutely. All right, our next question. What are the requirements for participating in the Inception Alliance for Healthcare? Is there an application process? Yeah, absolutely. So we love to connect with every AI uh, startup on the planet. Um, we we love to help you through your journey from um, very early through you know technical um, support, um, discounts to infrastructure, um, you know marketing milestones if you're trying to raise funding. So there, the the Nvidia Inception program uh, has a, a very easy application process where uh, then one of our extended team members, we have global team members uh, to support you can, can help engage. And the more we can learn about your product and how it works, um, then we can move you through the process of being part of Inception Alliance, which is then our premier members who then we can you know, really curate into uh, the relationships of the Alliance programs. You know, we, we work with GE, we work with Nuance to say, you know, what are some of the areas that you're really interested in innovating in? And then because we know our entire portfolio well of our Inception members, we can help do that matchmaking process. And you know, it's, it's not only you know, the matchmaking, we help build um, you know, uh, pitch competitions so you can really kind of uh, be able to pitch your product um, to the um, you know, to the Alliance members uh, so they can understand and think how can your solution uh, be helpful uh, to their platforms and their AI offerings um, and integrations uh, that they can make uh, for the field. So it's a very easy process. Um, and as I said, we, 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 we love to connect with any startup um, and we'll work, through the, we'll work through the process, get to know you, and then be able to help make the introductions into the Alliance program. Yeah, absolutely. Great. All right. Now, next question. How all the developments we've talked about today, how does the introduction of AI help to bring down the cost of healthcare for the consumer, whether it's the patients or the hospitals or the physicians? How does all of this development actually make that happen? Yeah. And, you know, I think if we think about what the opportunity for artificial intelligence is, 
it's there's a huge opportunity in just the efficiency okay uh, of of the entire if you think about the radiology uh, practice there's a lot of things that we can help now um, make more efficient um, if we can make the acquisition of the images more efficient so you don't have to get uh, re-imaged for example, because the very first time you were imaged, it was high quality and it can be read. Um, it, it still is the case that image capture sometimes goes wrong in CT and MR and X-ray and these these um, you know more expensive modalities. Ultrasound, um, it's it's a very you know very intense and, and very user defined uh, kind of capture of that imagery. So the more we can improve even the acquisition, um, that should reduce the cost of healthcare. Uh, to the consumers overall. Uh, so I think I think that's one thing. Um, the other is the more we can introduce um, innovative devices that are lower cost to begin with um, and that can be more readily available at the point of care, um, the more you're going to be able to be, you know, detected something early, early detection. Early detection will ultimately lower the cost of healthcare to the consumer because the hope is you have now caught something early than late. Uh, we know that early detection is better for the patient. And then of course, it's gonna bring the overall cost. So, you know, again, you can answer this question in probably a hundred different ways. Those are just two that came to mind. Yeah, I've been thinking through on the clinical side, there's tremendous opportunities to really help uh, clinicians in the delivery of their care, right? I mean, the clinicians only have like seven, 10 minutes per patient, and they're spending a lot of time on their computers and not with the patient. So it's all around quality, you know, and I can take it in a you know, hundred different directions. If I think about operational efficiency and using AI to help, what imaging should I bring to my uh, primary cache? Uh, do I want to bring patients that are coming today? How many priors? Uh, where do I move things to low speed storage. Like there's so many different ways that we can leverage AI clinically and non-clinically that'll help drive efficiencies and help bring down the cost of healthcare ultimately. Yeah. And I think, Brad, you know, we, we talk a lot about um, AI sort of after the fact, um, either you have, you have symptoms, it's coming in and de detecting something, it's helping your, your care team kind of, you know, diagnose and treat the best that we can. Um, there's also a massive opportunity that's ahead of us, which is in prediction. Again, if we can predict an adverse event that is potentially possible with a patient population, um, which, you know, natural language processing and so many of these brand new technologies that are hitting healthcare now, um, if we can help prevent things from happening in the first place, again, cost for the consumer goes down and a much healthier life you can live. Um, so, so we haven't even gotten to that yet, but we're really focused in on when people are sick, how can we really make it more efficient? How can we create better outcomes? How can we detect earlier? But then there's also this whole notion of predicting things before they even happen. Yeah, absolutely. Great. Well, the next question. What does Clara AGX contain? Are, does it, is it part of the Jetson platform? It's Yeah, it's built around the Jetson platform, exactly. So the Clara AGX is essentially an AI workstation. Okay, we've built it on, you know, it has the Clara AGX, it has a Mellanox a CX-6, and then it has a discrete RTX 6000 GPU. So essentially think of it as a, a little AI workstation that we've tried to take a lot of the guesswork out of uh, the the infrastructure needed for what is now a, you know a pretty complex but can be completely accelerated end to end um, you know instrument uh, compute pipeline everything from signal processing can be done on the GPU uh, to image processing to visualization and to all of the AI that you can throw at it uh, we can largely now handle within this platform uh, so from a hardware perspective that's what it comes with and then we also of course have the Claire AGX SDK. And this SDK, while it's, you know, it, co it comes with the AGX, this SDK can also be used on any other GPU hardware, the 
Clara, you know, on an EGX platform or any other GPU that you have available. But it's really meant to help take advantage of, you know, everything AGX offers. So, you know, a Jetson that can have, you know, direct access to the DGPU and then have other PCI Express interfaces so you can drop in, you know, maybe you need a FPGA front end card. Uh, so we have really, you know, with the SDK trying to, you know, allow you to have the flexibility uh, depending on the instrument that you're trying to develop. Um, and really, as I said, have a lot of headroom from an AI and computational perspective. So when you're developing, you can then imagine even scaling up and down from there. So you can kind of create your own fleet of your future AI instrument from low end all the way to extremely high end. Okay, great. Well, we'll go on to the next question. There's so many questions coming in. This is very exciting. <laughs> Uh, do you have cloud-based offerings for your solutions, uh, in particular the models, but I guess for the entire framework? Yeah, absolutely. Everything that NVIDIA does and everything NVIDIA Clara is cloud native. And so what that means, it's all containerized and ready to run on every cloud. And in fact, uh, just in October, uh, we uh, announced that NGC is now uh, becoming available on every single cloud marketplace on Google, on uh, Azure and on AWS. And so everything Clara, what we do is we package it up into containers, the models, all the resources that are necessary. And that's what we called collections. If you remember the collections, it's the pre-trained models, it's the training pipelines, it's the uh, deployment pipelines. And even uh, w w if we have it, the AI assisted annotation tools and pipelines. So we literally package it all up and it can be run on cloud, it can be run on-prem, uh, it's, it's cloud native. And, and we do that with every everything that we build. Yeah, I can tell you that that's one of, uh, one, I mean, one of many, but I, I love the fact that I can take my application and run it on-premise when I need to, or if I can bus it up to the cloud if I need to, if I wanted, if I'm demonstrating something, I can pop it up to a proof of concept on the cloud. Uh, if uh, I have a certain amount of compute uh, at my hospital and during the day I need to burst up into cloud uh, just for temporarily, I can absolutely do that. I don't have to think about uh, what's the operating system. I don't have to think about any of that stuff. I just say, take my application, take my model and run it here uh, and I can be assured that it's going to work. Uh, and we definitely have a lot of great guidelines. We've got blogs to talk about uh, specific clouds. Uh, we've got partners using clouds. Uh, we've got recommendations for the sizing for uh, various clouds for that. Uh, absolutely, it's, it's a fantastic environment and wherever you feel comfortable doing your work, you can absolutely do that. So that's great. Yep, I think uh, we have an we have a quick start guide on AWS for Clara that even has all of the COVID work that I mentioned, um, and with uh, Azure ML if I remember correctly. And I think uh, Greg Moore over at Azure uh, talked about Clara on on Azure today in their blog as well at Microsoft. Yep. So all there for yep, you. Yeah, absolutely. And it's like two lines to get started. Like it's not even the the threshold to get started is very very low. Uh, there's lots of videos and things. Uh, it's uh, it's fantastic. So uh, let's uh, go on to our next question. We might run over. I think that that's, uh, I'm getting the signal that that's okay. So we'll, we'll keep, we'll, we'll keep going for a few more, uh, a few more minutes for sure. So um, what does AGX Xavier and NX uh, do for real applications in healthcare so far? So like what, how is it being used today uh, right now? Yeah, so NX is a fantastic platform for anything camera based. Uh, so it's if you have um, applications where you're doing object detection or otherwise, um, you can even do pose estimation. So a lot of the new patient monitoring systems that couple a camera with a with an Xavier NX live streaming a video so that they can detect um, maybe when anomalous things are going to happen. Um, similarly with with AGX. Now this is just a beefier version of NX. It has a lot more um, compute and AI horsepower. And here um, Xavier is being used in uh, the the um, next generation, the, the handheld sequencers, as I mentioned, it's used in some ultrasound devices. Uh, it's used in uh, mobile, uh, you know, MRI devices. So uh, it's used in um, essentially you can think of it as a sidecar, as a little AI sidecar box. Uh, people are building it for so that they can bring essentially AI to augment the install base of instruments because it has, you know, enough 
um, CPU and GPU horsepower that it can run some of these critical AI applications right next to the instrument. So there's, a, again, a ton of applications for this. And, and as I said, that's why we knew it was so important that we build the Clara AGX developer, B B developer kit because we saw all of this work going on, all of these great opportunities, and we wanted to really spark the creativity and innovation across the next generation of AI devices and instruments. And so, you know, Xavier NX, if, if that's what you need from a power and performance perspective, a little bit more with AGX Xavier, and if you need a little bit more than that, you've got it all in the Clara AGX developer kit. Yeah, there's a wide range. Uh, and depending on what the needs are, uh, it's something that works. I've done experimentation with the Nano. You can see the boxes behind me, as well as an NX. Some really cool things that you can do. Uh, and again, it's easy to get started. And what's great is the work that I do on my desktop, the models that I'm creating, depending on how big those models are, I could just port them over to there. And it runs the, the same frameworks that I'm using on my desktops. So it's really, truly write once, run anywhere. Uh, which is fantastic. All right, go well, to our next question. All right, I think this will be our last question today. So how can every hospital easily take advantage of AI, uh, even when uh, they don't have data scientists? I think we already answered this question or something very similar to it. Um, but really getting started uh, and uh, how does someone who has a dream or wants to get moving with this, uh, how could they actually get started? Yeah, and, and I guess this is a slightly different, seems to me, variation on the question, Brad, where, um, as I said, our industry partners, uh, GE, Nuance, Siemens, I mean, this is how you can get started with AI without developing it yourself. Uh, there's a massive amount of innovation that's going on with your already existing um, healthcare industry leaders and partners themselves. So that's one way. The other is um, you can also uh, work with the startups directly. Uh, you don't have to go through the Inception Alliance program. Um, the startups have uh, their own business models. Uh, so you know, if you want to just be the consumer of artificial intelligence, um, it's kind of happening all around you. And, and I would I would absolutely encourage you to explore all the great companies. Um, now, you know, we I think we did already address if you're you're not already you're not already developing, but you want to be developing a couple options like consulting companies, our, our solution development partners, um, and then just kind of get trained up uh, on your own to, to, to get it done. Um, but the ecosystem has a ton of options for you. And that's why we really partner with the entire ecosystem from, you know, academic medical centers to the startups all the way through to the, you know, industry leaders so that AI can be everywhere depending on where you are in your AI journey. Yeah, and the only thing that I could uh, add to that is really just get involved in what's what's going on. I mean, there's a lot of things happening at RSNA, uh, at other shows as well, uh, at uh, institutions like the ACR, uh, to really get involved in projects to get started in AI. Uh, I worked on a great paper uh, earlier this year uh, where we went and did some federated learning training uh, and it wasn't as if that each of the hospitals had a team of data scientists working with me. Uh, certainly some had some, but just to get started, it isn't the, the threshold, as I said before, just isn't there anymore. It's not, this is your bar you have to clear. Uh, a lot of the work that we've done uh, and with our partners, with our enablers to make it happen, uh, it's really here. Uh, and there's just not very much to get you over to, to the next stop to really start to implement and drive AI in your institutions. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, I think if that's our last question, I do want to thank everybody for joining us. It was really fantastic and great questions. Um, I know that this is a uh, precious time. There's a lot uh, going on in the world today, but to spend it with you and the fact that we couldn't be there at RSNA together, which is usually such a great time, uh, we're delighted that we could spend the evening with you. And, and thank you so much, Brad, for joining me. Yes, no, thank you, Kimberly. This has been fantastic. I really appreciate uh, the talk and the questions have been phenomenal. So best wishes you know, for everyone uh, for a great RSNA uh, and take care. And I hope to uh, see you all sometime soon. Take care. Take care, everyone.